Happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. And today is going to be excitingly bold. You'll find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues, and this is when we hit the streets and ask different women their opinions on any topic. Let's hear what it is this week. Beginning now, I dare be able to feel the hour and you feel school, but I don't know who know. May you might tell me, friend, we are, me, pop, woman, friend, we so I'm going to call my mamma in our kitchen. If you say yes, you know, you are a bravo. I my My first boy had 32. Second one was 25 years. I joined the police. And I said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 When I give birth to a girl, she's not supposed to have some friends. Actually, those outing types, those friends that like outing, I will not encourage her to befriend those kind of people. I sorry. The woman on the move is a female entrepreneur, extremely hardworking, purposeful. Let's see who she is this week. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Experts say eating a nutritious breakfast sets the tone and promotes weight management by maintaining blood glucose levels. Anything food just can me in and anything can be a business opportunity. You just have to see it and take advantage of it. And so we are here to meet Jay, who loves cooking because her mom is a caterer. She took advantage of that and that gave birth to Jay's cravings. Jay is a fan of what she describes as colorful food. She would make vegetable salad and take it to work for breakfast. Over time, some colleagues found it appealing and asked her to prepare some for them too. That was a turning moment, and when she realized she could make some cash. Raised by a mom who is a cook, Jay finds it exciting cooking, as it brings her some form of satisfaction, serving others. We customize it to suit you. So even if the person is vegetarian, you let us know. If the person doesn't eat this, you let us know. The person doesn't take pork, you let us know. We, we, we work with what you bring. Price for packaged breakfast ranges from 150 to 900 Ghana cities, depending on what the client wants in the basket. Aside paying for the meal, delivery is at the cost to the client. Jay aspires to own a joint in the long term where clients can walk in for breakfast or brunch of their choice. For her, you can always start with very little. I always thought being an entrepreneur was a big deal. You had to look for lots of funds before you start up something, you know. But then with how things went about, I think people should take the risk. I think the opportunities are at our doors. If you're an entrepreneur like Jay, your one-stop platform to leverage on your business is to take advantage of the Media General Startup Fair and Funding Summit, which is scheduled to take place at the Kumasi Mall car park from May 17 to 19. Patrons can also buy locally made goods and services at great discounts. To partake or exhibit your products and services, call 024-127-2606 or 024-371-8245. The time is 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. So this basket here is going for 350 Ghana cities, and this is going for 220 Ghana cities. It's got everything in there. It's got scrambled eggs, drink, croissant, 
sausage waffles to mention but a few let me tell you one interesting thing the one that provides basket for jay can now boost of a motorcycle just because he is working with jay and also delivery guys can easily assess loans now because he associated with the brand jay's cravings it's also the rippling effect this business has on people that come into contact with it it's a positive one of course and so this is my breakfast and uh, bon appetit you're invited and so from Community 25 here at Tema, Josh Queenin reporting for TV3. Now, our winning woman for today is a winner. I told you you find out why. I just read her profile and I thought her profile should be an entire episode. So I'll just say one line, one line of who she is. Lucy Quist. She's the CEO and founder of Quist Blue Diamond. You're very welcome. It's such an honor to have you here. I know how busy you are. Thank you very And I just much. love all my guests when they take time out to come and inspire the women out there. Thank so you I must say me. thank you so very much for coming today. You're welcome. Thank so you I'm just wondering, me. why Blue Diamond before we even go in? Because um, a blue diamond is like really rare and precious. It's like you more. Di you, we know diamonds are precious, right? Blue diamonds are actually even more precious. And they're even more expensive. Them. Exactly for yes. that reason. So yes. We, you know, I wow! Congratulations. Blue <laughs> There's so you. many things I can congratulate you on. <laughs> so 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 many. But today, what I really want to know is to get to know you to get to know the Lucy Quiz that not everybody knows. <laughs> so, I mean, we know you as a former, you know, CEO of Airtel. You have so many accomplishments. I mean, amazing. You are a role model. So many women look up to you, which is amazing. But I want to know everything about you. So tell me about your childhood. How do you even, how did you grow up? What was it like? Um, I guess, um, I'm pretty average and normal. I'd say I think it's hard to think of your childhood and not think of it as just being... Um, and I'm normal. Um, I, I, I used to have a few brothers. I, I now have only one. I lost a couple I'm of very them. Sorry about that. Um, and, and sisters. And um, I'm kind of, um, I think that the, the, young, the ones who are younger than me will probably say a little bit bossy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I think the, the thing about my childhood that I kind of focus on the most is, is sort of the influences, mm, the people that influence right. me. And I, I I always, always have to start from my, my parents because my, my dad just had this mantra of you're capable of doing anything on the planet. Like, I genuinely believe it, like, that if I can't do something, because I haven't tried. Was it something he was telling all his children? Yeah, he just, he just made us feel that you can do whatever you want to do. So and he made you believe it. You believe so it. it wasn't so wasn't like just saying it. No, 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 it made you believe it. So you literally grew up thinking that the only things you, you, you can't do are things you haven't tried. It's, right, it's because you haven't that. tried it, but not because you don't, you can't um, figure can you it out. Can you give me an example of how he did that? I'm thinking about how, what I'm going to tell my son now. So um, like, how would he say it? Because you could just say you can do it, you can do it. No, no, he wasn't a you can do it, just you can do it. No, he wasn't sort of a, a motivational speaker in that, in that way. He was more practical about it. So when it came to actual schoolwork, for instance, mm -hmm. he was very keen on... Um, you could be best in class and you know you're capable of it and a year that you weren't you'll know, sit down like what happened why weren't mm. you best in class and that's kind of a more obvious one or he'd do things I, I ended up being an engineer mm -hmm. um, and he would practically make it feel as normal like you're, you're a child and you, you feel like you're already doing some engineering work because he'll get a toolbox and say oh, let, let's fix the fuse let's fix this plug, oh, wow. plug. There's a plug. Wow. so it's impractical you know so yeah. you suddenly think Oh, I can do this. This is yeah, not, it's not as, as it's, difficult or hard as right? it seems. Right? It's just a matter of somebody show, shows me, he showed right. me, and now I can do it. Um, so you, you grow up thinking that, okay, anything anything you want to become or do is possible. You don't have to be one thing. Mm. Um, and that part of not wanting to be one thing is probably, I get a bit more from my mum, because my mum always has, like, sort of dreams of things that she always wanted to do in life, and most of which she has done. Um, but it's just, she, she would always say to me, you know, life is what you make it. Mm. If I came home, I remember one time I came home from school, I was like in class three <laughs> and I just moved to a new school. Um, and I came home like, oh, I don't have any friends. The kids don't like me. You know, anything. It's, I didn't have any like tangible. tangible. It was just my feeling because yeah. I was new. New kids feel mm. like that. And she just looked me straight in the eye. Do you see? Life is what you make, you make it. it. 
Um, so yes, that was kind of the, 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 and we moved around, so I got to meet a lot of different people, but that was how I grew up. So what's, you're talking about schools, what schools did you go to? Did you went to school, I know you went to university in the, in the UK. In the UK, so in Ghana, schools? in Ghana, I went to a school at um, Attico Junction okay. called Happy Home, it's still there. Oh wow. I'm actually um, extremely proud of you. Oh, I'm telling you, one of my um, teachers wrote to me Aww. like two, two, or th two or three days ago. And he lives in the U.S. now. And he wrote to me out of the blue. And he says, you probably don't remember me, but I remember you. You're in my class. Da, da, da. And then he so once as soon as someone calls my siblings by name, I know the person does really yes. know me. Uh, and he said he was so proud. You know, you always seem really um, bright, but I'm really proud of everything well, you've done. I know. I was oh. like, wow. How did he reach you? He re so he sent me a message on Facebook. Um, and I thought that was just so, How so old touchy. Is he? That's, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Gosh, he must be. Not that I'm sharing my age. No, but no, don't tell us. He don't must tell be, me later. Yeah, tell exactly. Me later, <laughs> he must at least be in his sort of. Oh gosh, mid to late fifties at least, if not sixty and beyond. So wow, and he's on Facebook sending DMs. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> sending DMs. So that was that was really good. So I went to oh, I'm happy home. I went to then I went to Wesley Girls High School. Okay, and then I went to Prosec. So okay, those those okay. are my schools. Okay, well I went to St Rose's and St Rose's are Wesley Girls. We have this thing. Oh no like... no no! no. So <laughs> so my really really girls girls friends are from St Rose's. Okay, so I'm no. not gonna let okay, you have okay, that. Okay, one. okay, it's fine. Yeah, we're cool. Oh, okay, okay, we're let, cool. let's, let's have a toast. Okay, so we are friends. Yeah, okay. cool. Okay, we toast to that. Uh, lovely, that's a yes, chap man. Yeah, really nice. He's from the one to one bar here at the Moving Pick Hotel. Oh. Very nice smoothies and cocktails. Very, very, very mm, nice. delicious. Okay, so now growing up, like, did you actually know that you wanted to be an engineer and all that? What led you to your degree? Um, I think my desire to be an uh, become an engineer was established quite young. Mm. Um, because you understood seemed, what it was? Not really. I, I wouldn't say I, I understood how to do certain things, right? Like, like I said, fixing things around the house, getting the toolbox, um, a little bit about the electronic games and so on. But I think the early exposure to it kept me intrigued. Mm. So I, I kind of imagined that I'd have to do a lot of work, but I loved maths. So I thought, okay, and I know it's going to be a lot of maths. So I guess I'll be fine. So actually, it's not just written, it's actually practical as well, being yes. an engineer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, actually, until you practice being an engineer, you're kind of not really an engineer. Engineering mm -hmm. is a very practical mm -hmm. um, a skill, so you have to be able to, to make things. And the way engineering is taught all, pretty much all around the world is that the, the first year or so, you all take... Um, very common courses. So you, you have a baseline of understanding of right. engineering principles mm -hmm. that cuts across, and then you branch off into various fields. It may be electrical, chemical, okay. different, okay. What, different. What did you do? Electrical and electronic. You do a lot of work around, so like power distribution. So you decided that. Yes. I'm asking you this because like growing up in Ghana, you know how, what it's like with yeah. the teachers. They, they notice something, like you mentioned math. So I was fantastic with math. So my teacher said, you have to be a doctor. Yeah, Do you see no, what I mean? I, so a lot, that's why actually what led you to your degree, because sometimes many, many, many people have degrees in which they didn't enjoy or yeah. they don't even remember yeah. because they didn't want to do that. So it's best, I think, and, and you are blessed and it's fantastic that you actually have a degree in what you wanted oh, to yeah, do. Oh, yeah, I really wanted to So you enjoyed to it and you're an able engineer. to practice it. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm wondering. But, but, but like you said, growing up and all that, you... Exactly. You know, I was also interested in chemistry. I considered chemical engineering. So it's more what kind of... But becoming an engineer was sort of uh, like, my thing from a very, very wow. relatively young young age. Um, and, I, 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 you know, you, you ask about how I made the decision. Mm -hmm. The other thing about growing up for me was that I was invited to be a decision maker from a very young age. So mm. like my parents would be discussing something, not with me, with each other, and then... My dad will be like, okay, let's ask her what she thinks. Are you the first child? Um, between my parents, yes. Okay. So they would be like, but it wasn't more... Maybe they just saw some wisdom that you have. I, I don't think maturity. it's about... I, 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 honestly, I don't think it's wisdom and maturity. And I think this is where I believe we rob, rob our children a lot in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's about allowing a child to explore the world. Like, mm. look, I can imagine that probably half of the things I said were completely off the mark or silly, right? Because I don't remember. But when somebody keeps giving you that platform and making you feel like, 
actually, I'm very interested in your opinion. What do you think? You start to develop, to develop that confidence that actually I can also speak. I have an opinion right. and I can express but that's it. Very, did your parents grow up here? That's very different. They did. Because it's very shut up. I'm talking. No, no, no. They're not like that at all. Wow. So, that is interesting. Um, so I, they, they always gave me this sense of you got to um, think and tell us what you think. I have to pause here. Ladies, ladies, mothers out there, big sisters, mentors, this is a great tip I am taking for myself if you won't take. But I think it's fantastic that we allow the younger ones to express themselves, whether or not they are right, whether or not it's, you know, they know. But I think allowing develops the confidence. I like that. It's, it's, it's so important. So um, I sort of developed this notion of, even if I didn't, I don't always have to express my opinion, but I have to have an opinion, mm. right? And I remember my kids are teenagers now, but when they were little, and when I say little, they were like three, <laughs> three, five, and so on, I used to get them to do presentations. So at the end of the, the, the wow. week, I would say, you know, we'd sit down and they'd stand there and I'd say, present yourself to us. <laughs> and and so on what, on any, any topic. Anything, anything, you know, introduce yourself, tell us about you and tell us what you're, you know, so you're, and then they would just stand there, these little people doing How presentations. Cute. How cute. But it's kind of passing on the notion of, I want to hear your voice mm. beyond. So they would never be afraid of public speaking. Um, yeah, they, sh they, well, I know that there, there are other pressures of, uh, pressures of public speaking, but I think that the baseline component of being confident in who you mm -hmm. are, I think they're, they're, they're pretty Fantastic. okay. Fantastic. That's amazing. Now, I'm so, now, now I can't wait to read your book, actually, because <laughs> I'm wondering if this is what you're sharing with me. What have you written? <laughs> so congratulations Thank you. on that. The Thank Bold you. New Normal. Yes. I love the title. What's your definition of bold? Uh, boldness is the ability to. to go with whatever you believe you should do, regardless of, you know, what um, the status quo is, what other people think as the way to you know, do mm -hmm. things. What you believe that you can and should do, go ahead and do be bold. You don't That's have to a, and that was aligned. actually part of the sermon in my church on Sunday. Oh, excellent. And at the end, the pastor was like, be bold. Yes. Step out there. There's so much in you. Now, how does that, I'm just thinking being bold. Now, how do you relate it to being normal? So here's the issue. Our normality is problematic, mm. right? So what we see as normal, um, and I'm talking not just on a sort of a micro con country level, but more on a macro continent level mm -hmm. and and beyond that we, we kind of see, in, when I say we, I'm generalizing mm -hmm. here. Of course, they're, you know, um, different people, but um, we, we kind of see this country and continent for what is, for what it's not. Uh, when, I, when I say what it's not, I mean for what's missing. So our normal is, you said a child shouldn't speak, mm -hmm. right? But we all know as adults, that you need to be confident no, to be I, successful. No, actually, I don't mind a child speaking, but then many of us grew up not being allowed to That's speak. That's what I mean. Yeah. So you don't personally don't yeah. mind, but our norm, our mm. normal mm. is a child shouldn't speak, yeah. right? Yeah. So a mom so can So it's like have, a cultural it's thing? A culture, so we can have a whole debate with a child over, um, you want her to wear a blue dress and she said she wants to do a red, wear a red dress. To me, it's neither here nor there. If I said red and you want blue, wear it. It's a dress, exactly. And, and what I like is the fact that you've decided, right? At that point, the kind of decision you can make is you can't make the decision of whether you go to school or not. That's not right. a decision you're allowed to right. make. But whether you wear the red dress or the blue what dress, difference does it make what difference really? does it make? And, but we will insist that I said red, you cannot mm. say blue. So we have that. We also have this thing around, look, we on a, on a macro level really need to develop really quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the strides and the approach that we're taking, I believe, is moving us forward too slowly. Mm. And some of the things I talk about are what our normal is today and how we need to craft a new normal. Right. So okay. in our normality, okay. we, can, we, we are always ascribed the description of poor or poverty mm -hmm. associated with us. And I want us to rethink that and think, how do we create systems this allow us to prosper. So this will speak to the individual. Yes. To start to make the change. It's about the individual mm. because all too often we kind of pass the buck and expect that someone else will fix it. Mm -hmm. But we all have a sphere within which we have influence. We have responsibilities. We have people 
who engage with us. We have people who talk to us. Some look, not necessarily even looking up to in, in, a, in, a, in a sense of seniority, just in that sense of doing my job, playing my role. Wow. I'm a teacher. My job is to get the best out of the, these mm -hmm. children. You know, that is a sphere of right, influence. Right. And how are we ensuring that within that sphere of influence, we're breaking away from the norm? Because everything we see is produced out of a system. True. We run a system that's producing too many poor people. Hmm. We now need to, now this is now engineering thinking. <laughs> yeah, because it's systemic. Now you need, because you have a system, you, macros, put input, the <laughs> you put an input into it and you get an output. This box, the system needs to change. Um, we really, and it starts at the individual level. So what is it like, because you're a confident woman. I'm telling you, if you don't know, <laughs> this is what I, I saw you speak at the Glacier Summit a few mm. weeks ago. Thank your you. expressions, your manners, you're a confident woman. Thank you. How, what was it like? And I mean, congratulations, you were, you know, and I'm seeing here, FIFA appointed vice president for, to do with football. I mean, women, the norm <laughs> is that women like to, you know, do other things than football. Okay, now what is it like being in this whole world of men? If you know what I mean. Yeah. So you're an engineer, you have a role in football in Ghana, you know, all of these things. How do you, and for the women out there who probably are having issues with mm -hmm. this, how do you overcome that? For me, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I wasn't um, raised as quote unquote a woman. I am a woman. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I was raised as Lucy. Mm -hmm. So I see myself, I, I view myself more as the person first. Mm -hmm. Being a woman is one of the things about me. Mm -hmm. It's not who, it's, it's not, not what all makes of me. You. Exactly. Right. And I think sometimes too often we, we, we kind of, our, our first step that we offer, our, our entry conversation is about, I'm a woman. That's a very binary way to look at the world, mm. right? Because we're, we're both women, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so much more to us. We probably find that you're good at, you know, so, well, you're, you're, you're presenting, right? Mm. You're, you're, you've got so many things you're good mm -hmm. at. Let's not get into all the other businesses that you run. Mm -hmm. Those things really, when someone meets you, they can't walk away and just say, she's a woman. No, no she's a, smart, yeah, she's a business, so she runs things. business, she's a business person, all these things well, about you, that. you know? <laughs> so I think for me, that's what makes the difference that mm. I don't go around saying, I'm a woman, so I'm in a box called women. Mm. I'm in a box that is open called Lucy. That's it. And, you um, and everything, anything yes, anything that involves being me, I'll just go ahead and do it. Wow. So that's the thing. So when you're in this world, um, I always... <laughs> So, but you, you, you started the conversation really well, starting from the point about home, because home is a, a major part of our socialization. Mm -hmm. And because of what I described to you, I've always been socialized to be me. So to be honest, I actually didn't fully understand that people have expectations, limiting expectations, um, of what a, a, a woman can do until probably my late teens. Wow. It, won't, it wasn't something wow, I, I faced as yes, my daily yes. life. I just faced being Lucy, you're supposed mm. to do, you should do this, you did. Mm. So I realize it, I recognize it. I'm not diminishing do you think, do you the importance. Think, does it make you, does it give you um, challenges, um, you know, or, or struggles with other women, for example, or with men? Um, I don't know about. Not necessarily struggles, but I try to explain myself so that they understand that I empathize and I understand. It doesn't mean that I haven't sat in meetings where people have thought they, they had a right to ignore me mm -hmm. or downplay. It happens. But my point is that I don't go in carrying it on my shoulder. I need you speak to the I'm ladies out there. No, no, no. Because no, I'm just like, wow. I you know, just it will love happen, this. right? Like I said, I realized when I was older that it, this is how the real world works. The real world, world may say you're a woman first. So that's a fact. And I'm not denying them that. But the fact that I always, you know, I, always, I, I said uh, you once uh, on International Women's Day that someone else's bias is not my problem. True. If you're biased against women, it's not my problem. It's your problem. I'm not going to own your problem. I'm going to go forth and do and be whatever I want to and be. And prove you wrong. Yeah, because mm. the fact that you think otherwise of women is your problem, not mine. So honestly, ladies, don't let someone else's bias be your problem. Be all of the things that you can be. You, yes, you're a woman. But you're sometimes a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, an engineer, a doctor, a nurse, a caterer, an event planner. Um, you're, you're an extrovert, an introvert. Uh, you're you're uh, warm and embracing or you're, you're intensive. You're intense, sorry, you, you, or you think a lot. There's so many things mm -hmm. to you. 
women is one of them. So, um, Lucy, um, I really want you to speak to women out there mm -hmm. as well on raising children. I mean, just a few days ago, I got a forwarded message and also about how a lot of, and I actually was speaking to an older woman as well mm -hmm. a few weeks ago who was saying that today's woman is so lazy with their children. That's what she said. And I was like, really? Why would you say that? Yeah, wow. She did have a point, though. Okay. And what she was saying was, we don't spend enough time with our children today now. It's always take my phone, keep quiet, take my this. So we don't have that one-on-one. -on -one. Because like what you're saying, your father will actually go and fix things with you. That's how you grew up. Mm. So you even saw him, the man, who he was. Mm. I think it's all part of who you become today. Yes, of course. You know, of and course. I think it's such a blessing. Now, I want you to talk to mothers out there. Okay, and being a mother doesn't just necessarily mean you've actually birthed a child. Mm -hmm. You can be a mother to somebody. Yeah. So let's even say to role models. So every mother should be a role model. Every role model is sort of like a mother. Mm. So I think speak to the women out there. Speak to role models, to mothers, on how to bring up. That's what it is, the foundation. Mm. So how do we do that? You're speaking to me as well. Mm. How do we bring up our children to one day be seated in this chair saying that the base is how I started? Um, hmm... It's, it's quite a complicated question because, I mean, my, my kids are up to teenage now. Mm -hmm. So I, I firsthand, of course, I've mentored some older people, but I have firsthand experience up until sort of the teenage years. And there are a couple of things. I think the, the responsibility of raising children and the effort required changes over time mm -hmm. because they, they change. You, they yeah. kind of grow, grow up. Um, I really believe it's important to recognize each child as an individual mm. and devise ways to engage each child in, a way, in ways that work for that individual child. So I remember one of my biggest learning points as a, as a, as a young mum was that I, always, I assumed that everything that works with my first child, second child, I'll be fine. Mm. <laughs> and pretty much well, everything. That's what I thought. Yeah. No? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. That, because they're different people, you see. Well, I, well you know what? Funny enough, it's like now I, I'm ready for the second. I, I think, oh, I've got to sort of. Oh, so no, I, no, I'm, no, I'm no, think, no, 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 no. I think I'm just going to, like, yeah. you know. No. Second is about to surprise you. Oh, my goodness. Right? Okay. And, and that's a piece. So, so, I, so I thought a baby's a baby, right? The same way we say a woman's a woman. No, a baby's not a baby. A baby's a person, right? So even right from that young age, the things that this one would cry about, the other one wouldn't cry about. Um, the things that this one needed didn't need as much attention, this one may need mm. more. And that's because I learned they're different individuals. Mm. And so they have different needs, they have different responses to you. And so as a parent, it's about availing yourself to get to understand the human um, being yeah. and then deciding, okay, so this human being needs this from me mm. and this other human being needs, needs that, that from me. Yeah. And it's not the same, but I have to give different aspects of me mm. to different these different and people. And they should all feel the same, they right? Should, they should feel the same. Mm. If you give people what they need, they will feel the same, mm. right? Um, and it's also a matter of prioritization. So I think, at least in the context of, of Ghana, um, sometimes women, women are a bit overwhelmed. Mm. They, they've taken on too much. So it's not necessarily that, you know, I empathize that they want to just hand over a device and leave the, get mm. the child to leave them alone. But in a lot of situations, they've taken on so much and they, they're trying to live up to all these expectations that are not their own. You know, so they're going to all these events, they're doing all these things. That, and sometimes I ask them, you know, I think you have to come on two more. You have to come on two more episodes. This is not the end. You know, <laughs> just prioritize. Choose what's important to you. Don't do it because other people are so doing you're not it. Or so it's not about pleasing no. others that you are, you are suffering. Yeah. I mean, if there's an, an, an event and I can't make it, I would genuinely tell you, I'm sorry I can't mm. make it. It's not an affront to you. It's not that I think that... You know, but if I really have a priority, I'll be honest right, about it. Right, so it's than, prioritizing. Yeah, that's what's really, important. You re and right. for me, look, our biggest priority should be those people at home because mm. we have one shot, one chance to raise them. Right. Raise. But how does that affect your career, though? Um, as a corporate woman, hmm. as an entrepreneur? The starting point is choosing carefully mm. the people who are part of your life. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Um, and from a woman's perspective, then that number, the number one on that list is your husband. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to start thinking ahead to, you, you don't have all the answers, you don't have a crystal ball, you can't see the future, but you kind of know 
from a, probably a young age, whether you want to be working or not. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. you can say, I want to work yes, or not. Yes. You may not know what you're going to do, but you may say. So you need to make sure that you're choosing people who are aligned to that kind of thinking. You don't want to choose someone who says, oh, I thought you would stop working. And then you say, oh, I thought I'd going to keep working. That becomes a whole other mm -hmm. thing. Um, so for me, it's about creating a support system, a mm. support system that's there for you. So you choose the right people, but then you also realize that there are other people who can help you. And if they're willing to help you, let them. Okay. Again, mm. prioritize. So let me, uh, let me exp explain clearly what I mean. If my children are really little and someone can help with, I know, cleaning up um, the, some part of the house or doing something, I'm not going to obsess and say, unless I am the person to personally scrub this place, <laughs> then, no, because then I, I quickly think into what is going to add value to them. As long as the place is clean, they'll be fine. But who should be talking to them? Who should be engaging them? Who should be doing so do a presentation? So get somebody else to do that so you yeah. can have enough time. Yeah, okay, so I repent. Prioritize, okay. <laughs> because they need us, but... If we try to work and do, be all things to all human beings at the same time, nine times out of ten, because they can't complain as much, they lose out. Mm. They need to get the number one, especially if you're a working woman, then you have a finite amount of time when you're not at work. Right. That time when you're not at work, what percentage of it is going to them? To, yeah. Even if it's so simple things like just hanging, because you know what children like, sometimes they won't tell you anything. You say, how is this? Oh, fine. How's school? This How's church? Blah, blah, blah. But if you sit down and you say, oh, okay, let's watch this. And then they start a conversation. Yeah. Then it starts going, so then this happened, then this. You're thinking, but well, you I actually, I know. When I asked you, you, <laughs> you, didn't say, you said nothing. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's, let's listen, let's talk. And then they open, so you have to, they need your time, right? Right, so, attention. Exactly. So it's really about the uh, prioritization, allow, allowing people to support you. And then, of course, doing similarly at the workplace. Mm. So when you're at work, so for instance, when I'm, I'm at work, I always had this principle of whatever the children needed when I'm at work, I will sort out. So I need mm. to know that they, there's what they're going to eat after school, what they're right. going to do. Da, da, da. So you sort all of that out. That has everything. to be sorted. So that when I'm at work, I can focus. And focus, get it right. done, get out. Don't go and sit there and then start chatting. Do you know what, Lucy? Stretching. We're going to have like a whole, maybe Lucy Quest edition. <laughs> Where you have like episode one, episode two, <laughs> like you know, no, you so must that, come back. It's so been that, awesome, thank you, awesome. thank you, Seriously. thank you so much for having Seriously, me. Seriously, I'm going to continue with you later. Thank you, thank but you. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> so, this is what I'm doing now, and this is what I've always loved to do. I love, I'm promoting self love, I'm promoting self confidence. Yes, that's why I was asking all those questions as well oh. about you know the kinds of things you know. So, this, this is this is the Renee Q love pillow. Okay, and the whole point of this was, I just said, look, let me do this. And everybody who has it, anytime you see it, I want you to remember something that you actually love about yourself. Yes. And to say to yourself, yes. you have to con con continuously tell yourself that you love yourself. It's so, so important. And many women that I've spoken to have had issues with self-confidence, self-esteem, because a lot of the time they were never told, I love you. And I'm saying, so if there's nobody else to tell you or there's nobody to tell you, will you not love yourself? You must love yourself. So I want you to share one thing you love about you. Oh, this I really give this to you. Oh, because this is, this is a genuine <laughs> surprise. So now I have to think. What's the one, one thing, thing you love about yourself? Mm, I love about myself. Um, I think that what I love most about myself is the ability and opportunity to engage other people. Mm. I love the fact that when I'm talking to people, whoever they are, whatever they do, they feel comfortable to have a conversation mm. with me. Because I love people. I love to hear what they're thinking, what they're doing, what's going on with them. So the fact that they feel comfortable about being, being you know, around being me, around I think you. I love that because I would be actually quite... So you're warm person. Yeah, and, and maybe a bit nosy as well. <laughs> but... I, I, I think I'd be pained to live a life where when people met me, they wanted to get away as quickly as possible. Mm. I think I'd be miserable based on my, my character, mm. get to know people as individuals. Um, and I think that's what I love about myself, that people just are happy to be with me and I, I, because I love to be with them. And that's why I can't even end the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> so again, congratulations on Thank this. You. I love it so much. The bold mm. new normal. It's fantastic Thank you. and I'm really looking forward to reading this is that one thing you could share just one thing you oh gosh share a, a little a little secret 
that will encourage everybody to go out there. You have to read. Reading is developing okay. yourself. It's so important. So this book is targeted at everybody, mm -hmm. right? But I did write one particular chapter about women. Okay. Because when it comes to this, this notion of developing our country and continent and the behaviors and leadership that we need to do that, I think sometimes when people are having the conversation, including women, they, they think it's, oh, we don't have enough women. And I've been so many conversations mm. when I say, we need to have some women in this group. And they'll say, but where are the women to do it? Mm. So I think it's a, the chapters and uh, the title of the chapter is We Have the Women. We Have the Women. And I talk about the positive characteristics and how our culture actually does respect women. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have certain cultural norms that are gender neutral, that we don't mm. talk about as much. And then I share examples of some great women who I think we should talk about more rather than talking about. Them. I talk about Wangari Mathai. Okay. She's Kenyan. Okay. She was an environmentalist. I believe she's the first African woman to win a Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, wow. Okay. And she fought tirelessly her whole life to save the environment in her home country of Kenya. Mm. And two things I learned from, from her. Uh, one was about the fact that it, the, her number one thing about the environment was planting trees, obviously. Mm -hmm. But so that's the first thing I learned that we can, we can plant yeah. a woman can lead the charge to, because she's, yes. she's a smart human being. She's not just a woman. But the other thing um, Wangari um, talked about, which I have tried to apply even more to my life is that actually the best nutrition for us are the things that grow where we live. So the things that grow naturally in your environment are the best things for you to eat. Right. So hint, hint, we eat a lot of imported food. Yeah, so organic, we need, to, we need the organic What things grows, around. what yes, naturally grows yes, in yes, your yes, soil yeah. is actually best for you this year. And mm. she talks about, she used to talk about how the changing diet of food that was alien to uh, uh, you know, her country mm -hmm. was causing problems for her, her people. So like I yeah, said, we have episode some great two, women. Episode three, <laughs> episode four. Thank you so much. Thank Today you for having me. so eye-opening. I've learned really a lot personally. It. Thank you. I really I've appreciate so, it. And I know that I'll tell you later. Okay. okay? All right. We'll be dear. right back. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm ending this episode today with so much excitement. I'm feeling so bold to go out there. And I think you should feel the same way because you're today's woman. And today's woman is bold. Many thanks to our sponsors, the Moving Pick Ambassador Hotel and GTP. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at ReneQGH. Don't miss the show next week, 11 a.m., TV3 and DSTV channel 279. Have a blessed weekend, everybody.